Welcome back, my dear brothers and sisters and viewers of Zikra TV. We've been talking about hospices and the role and the function that hospices have in our communities and the vital service that they provide. In the, in the first two parts of this program, we've been talking to Fazan Aziz and Sadaf Adnan, who work for Kirkwood Hospice, and the amazing work that they do and how they support not just people who are ill, but also their families as well. Now, in this part of the program, I've got another guest who's joined me. It's Kusum Dalal. Kusum um, lost her husband uh, not many years ago, and she is one of the people who use the hospice. And she's going to come and talk to us and provide her testimony of how she found the hospice providing support to her and her family. Kusum, welcome. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We still have Sadaf with us, so hopefully she'll be able to help us as well in this part of the. I mean, you unfortunately went through this process where your husband became ill, you know, very young, and obviously, you know, he, he went through a very difficult time, and you as a family, with, you know, with the whole family went through a difficult time, and you used the hospice as well, services. How did you find that? How did you access it? How did you find the, the service? So, the first time I heard, I mean, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a social worker by profession, so mm -hmm. I, I know of hospices, but when you actually when you actually come into use, uh, mm. when the professional talks to you about um, using a hospice for yourself, it's a total different um, experience, you know, and to, to hear the word hospice, you think that is the end of life. And I think the first time, it, it, I mean, my, my experience of using hospice, we didn't have long enough, unfortunately, to use it for my husband because by the time we were told about the uh, the facility, it was actually towards end of life. Mm -hmm. um, we were, I remember very clearly, you know, we were at the hospital and as part of the discharge plan, one of the, um, there were two two options. One was to either go in, my husband to go into the hospice or to, to, to be discharged at home. And the reason why we considered using a hospice was because of pain management. I didn't feel confident enough to manage my husband's pain management mm. um, at home mm. and decided that, that yes, perhaps hospice will be the right place for, for us to go to. Um, the one thing that I found was that I I when you're in hospital, the actual setting is it's based around the medical model. So everything is so clinical. And they told me about the hospice being very, uh, you know, sort of, um, it's going to be like a homely environment. And I thought, well, how can it be a homely environment? You know, it's still going to have nurses on site. And, and I didn't really picture it until we agreed. We, I said to, my, I said to, I had a discussion with my family and um, the staff there, and we said, yes, We'll we'll go for the, we'll we'll use the hospice. Um, so when we got there, we found that it was a totally different setting to what I imagined it to be. Um, the hospice uses a, a social model as well as in conjunction with a medical model. You know they have mm -hmm. all all the staff there trained medically. Um, so, but they take into account of the environmental factors. So um, I remember having a conversation with the staff there. I talked to my, um, I, I talked to the team, saying that my husband uh, was a keen gardener and he loved, you know, um, spending time in the garden. And what they said to me is, "Oh, perfect, because your husband will be able to spend time in the gardens there. The, the, all hospita hospices have beautiful gardens, and that is, you know, I, I, I decided that right if they can provide that facility." fantastic you know um, and then I'm thinking well how on earth are they going to be able to take him to the garden well a actually when we got there we realized that the my husband wasn't physically going he was unable to move out of bed he was he was spending all his time in bed at that time but they had the environment at the hospice was geared around opening doors taking the bed into the garden wow. and I found that amazing you know mm. um, as I said, unfortunately, we didn't have long enough to spend too much time there. But whilst we had that little bit of time there, the staff couldn't have done. They could. They did so, so you, much. You you found mm. out quite late that the hospice was an option. Yeah. Is that because the hospital does not automatically 
offer that advice? I think, I think um, I always was under the impression, even though I'm a professional social worker, I, did, I always thought that it was referred by a medical mm. staff, you know, to do it by a GP or the consultants at the hospital. I wasn't aware that you could self-refer. Mm. Had I had known that, I would have, I would have really um, been accessing the facility. But also, the other thing what, which I found later on was that you provide counselling service, mm, which is, a f again, a, such a useful service, mm. not just to, to the individual, but to families. I have young children. That service could have been offered to my children as well. Mm. I found out too late, unfortunately. Um, I think we hear that all the time, yeah. so people will always say, if only I'd known about the hospice and what you offer sooner. And sometimes the fact that there's a stigma, it gets in the way and yeah. it stops people mm. from benefiting earlier. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and but being a, being a social worker, obviously you were aware of hospices. Oh yes, yeah. right? yes. Obviously. Yeah. But did the thought never occur to you while you were going through this very difficult time? No. That that could be one of the options that you could look at? No, unfortunately. Mm. And, and I wasn't even aware of respite. Even though I, I promote, I advocate respite mm -hmm. for my service users, but for myself, it, it, it needed another person to highlight that to me, mm. you know, somebody to point out. So you out. do what a lot of people do, you carry on battling yourself yeah. Yeah. and try and do the best you can. Yeah. In the meantime, you yeah. yourself suffer as well, but you don't realise yeah. it. Mm. And, and what else, I, what the other thing I found out was a lot of the times when you're in that situation, it, everything's focused around the, the person that, that is suffering, not, not about the family. And I think... The hospice gears, the ho it's, it's around the family as well as the service user, not mm. just not just the patient, um, and that that was something that I thought, my God, you know, why didn't I know about this facility mm. earlier? Because I would have used it otherwise, you know. Mm. Um, and how do you find this? As you say, the staff in the hospice were different because the hospital is very clinical, isn't it? Mm. Right, so it's not sort the, of focused the around the staff there. Yeah, are so person centred. Right. Um, they take it into, I mean, um, one, th one thing that was very important to me was having my family around me. I felt so, n so nervous, so frightened of being alone in the hospice on my own. So I kept on saying to, th I'd, I'd only been there a few hours and I was saying to the staff that I need to, I need to go home. I need to, I need, I can't stay here. Mm. And they asked me one of the questions, why do, why do you want to go home? And I said, well, my family at home, I need to be around my husband and I, we need to be around family. So they said, well, um, how many people are there? And I explained that it's a very big family. You know, I have my in-laws, my, my own family, my brothers, my siblings, uh, you know, everybody around me. I need them all around me. Mm. So they said, well, I'll tell you what, we don't have, they didn't have a daycare facility running that, that the following day. They said, if we, if we allow you all to be together, mm. will that be enough for you to stay one more night? So I thought about it and I thought, well, yes, why not? And they gave us that opportunity. And it's like what you were saying, that you will try and accommodate to individuals' needs. Definitely. Whether it's small, big, you will yeah. try. Yeah. Mm. We, you know, they, they gave us a whole floor and we all spent one night together. It was just amazing, mm. you know. And did that help you psychologically as well? Yeah. During this difficult time? Yes, because on, we had the medical team on site. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the, the one thing that I was learning all the time was um, uh, the w at the time my husband was inserted a syringe box. Well, had I had gone home, I would... I would. I mean, I know we would have some uh, uh, nurses coming to, to to support us, but there they had the staff on site. So every so many hours they'd be coming in, checking on, on us, checking on my husband, and being th f being there for all of us. Yeah, that yeah. reassurance. Yeah. Of, of, yeah, staff around you. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas in hospital, obviously, staff are busy with yeah. other people as well. So here it was focused on you know the individual yeah. as well. So I mean. As having used the hospice very briefly or, or as, as it was, would you say, and I know you've said this, if you were aware of it beforehand, you would have used it. Yeah. Would you obviously say to our viewers that if you find yourself in the situation that you found yourself in, yeah. would you strongly advise them to, to contact the local hospices? Absolutely. I would, I would um, even, you've got, lo you've got like um, Kirkwood Hospice, it's not, you've got the, um, you've got like, uh, um, 
coffee mornings, yeah. those sort of events, they, they can be in an informal setting. You can just drop in you can, and definitely. get information to yeah. start off with because it's quite a... It's daunting, isn't it? It is it's very daunting, scary, yeah. yeah. I think lots of people will come up and up and down our drive a few times and I've work up the courage to come in. Yeah. So I think we know that people are, are daunted by it, but we welcome anyone with a smile you know, and a hot drink and anyone who's been will know what a special place it is Absolutely. and how friendly we all are. Yeah. What's the are. setting like? Is the setting like in a sort of in a countryside sort of location type of thing? Is it so very sort of ambient in, in terms so of we are based tranquil? In, in Dalton, we have the most incredible garden. So we've just won um, a garden award, so um, Gardens in Bloom in Gold. So we've won that twice and all of our rooms will look out into the garden. So anyone who's been will expect a hospital and what they find is very different. Mm. But again, you know, if anyone is interested in finding out more, just pop in, come to our drop-in days, come and have a look. Inshallah, I'm, I'm going to make an effort yeah, and come and see the place. Well, Hopefully, Inshallah, I never want to use it. Yeah. Well, Allah, not correct, I have to use it. But if I do, I'd rather be with you than anywhere else, I'd say. But yeah, I mean, this is something, I mean, your personal testimony. Yeah. And how about your wider family? How did they view the fact that, you know, you went, you decided to go to the hospice? Did they, did they see that I as something that was a positive? Oh, yeah, they were very supportive. I mean, my husband was 44 mm -hmm. at the time. And um, again, we say hospice is supposed to be for, you think, oh, sure, we can't, yeah, we can't yeah, use a hospice because my husband's far too young. I'm, you know, I, I, I can't use that service, I'm far too young. Mm. But actually, when I found out that I they, they support um, from 18 onwards, mm. till, you know, from 18 till cradle, it's, it's you know, I had, uh, yeah, it's, you, you do forget. Um, but my family were very, very supportive and um, they found the whole, they, they, they could not believe that, th that we have, we are so privileged, we're so lucky, we have this facility mm. in Kirklees. Um, I use Wakefield Hospice um, because at the time I think they gave us a choice between Kirkwood Hospice and Wakefield Hospice. Um, the the first bed that became available was Wakefield Hospice mm. and we accepted it. Um, the other thing which again is so clear in my head is the day I stayed at the hospice I remember I felt I needed I, I needed to sort of um, I wasn't I didn't I hadn't slept all night and um, the staff there were saying, would you like to use the showering facilities? Would you like to use it? And, and I'm thinking, wow, you know. They you can't do that in a hospital. Yeah, mm. yeah. So they gave yeah. me the opportunity to use the, the, the shower facilities. Um, just, just amazing. It was just really, really good. So it was like home from home to a certain extent mm. with yeah. a supporting network. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I do think about people who don't have, I mean, I'm very fortunate that my my home environment, um, um, you know, is is, is good. Um, I have a good family, uh, good family network. My home is spacious enough. I have space in the house for family visiting. Mm -hmm. um, but had I been in that situation where I didn't have enough space, I my house was, you know, it wasn't the best environment. Hospice, you would have struggled, yeah. yeah. Hospice is just an, another a place where. It's a different world, you know. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I mean, I mean, I know we would like to carry on talking about this because I think the testimony that you provided is a phenomenal testimony about the the very very valuable service that the hospices offer. I hope you found this program interesting. Um, thank you for coming, Sadaf. Thank you very thank much. Thank you for having me. Kusum, thank you for coming here and sharing mm, your experience. You. And I'd like to thank Fazana Aziz, who's now obviously left, but she's still in the studio for coming along. This, as I say, is a, a service that is vital in our community. And they are run primarily from donations. And I think everyone who may have used it or is aware of it or knows somebody who has used it will recognize that this is something that we need to make sure uh, us, us is a service that is remains in our community, is well funded, and that everyone who is watching this program, I hope you'll make an effort to contribute whatever you can to your local hospices, wherever they may be in the country, because this is a service that I think everyone will need at some stage in our lives. It's a phenomenal service. Thank you for coming and sharing this with us. I hope you've enjoyed the program. Inshallah, I'll see you next week. In the meantime, thank you very much to everyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Inshallah, I'll see you next week.